Ron Leaker with Resin Maniacs. This episode is brought to you by Michigan Toy Soldier Company, your one-stop shop for all your modeling needs. This one's going to be a fun one, guys. Polar Lights, 1-350 scale, Klingon Katanga. Now, this is a grill kit for me. I have been wanting this kit to come out for years. Beautiful box art. Every single square inch of this box is covered with good photos. Uh, the beautiful thing about this ship is it can be done in one of two configurations. It can be done as one of the ships that you see in Star Trek The Motion Picture, or it can be done as the Kronos One from Star Trek The Motion Picture. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we have a 350th scale Klingon battle cruiser. Let's get in the box, shall we? First thing you notice is a standard Polar Lights instruction sheet. Good information on the front. Step-by-step -step building instructions on how this baby goes together. Front and back. Well laid out, well designed, easy to follow steps. Good information on certain parts, where they need to go, what they need to be painted. Good job on the instructions. Comes with a half round base with a tube. Also has a resin part attached in the base. We'll get to that a little bit later. The model is cast in a very dark green polystyrene, uh, but when you get down into the details, it is meticulously done. The panel lines are absolutely brilliant, very crisp, very clear, good detail. This kit was designed to be lit, folks, and they built this thing for the purpose of lighting this baby up. Now, have to be honest, I have been reading and hearing some folks online talking about a small design flaw with this. So I got this out to take a look. The top hole and the bottom hole where it fits together has got a slight twist in it. You can kind of see it there to where the edges do not come all the way down and seat uh, well to the bottom hole. After looking at this kit and going over some of the ways that Polar Lights engineer it, I don't see this as a huge problem. The guide pins on the top and bottom section are very long. They're very precise. When you pull these down and then add the edge detail that comes to the kit, that bend goes away. Now, if it was curled way up, I would say, yeah, you've got a problem. This is a big piece. It is a thin piece. So there's going to be some deformation just because of the mechanics of the plastic. But I don't rate this as an overall problem. I look at it as more of, you know, a problem that you're going to have to overcome in construction. Uh, rate it more in a minor annoyance than a major problem. So that being said, let's move on to the sprues. The sprues are well designed, evenly spaced. You've got extremely good detail, extremely good clarity. There's no flash on these parts. Everything's molded in this dark green, almost black plastic. Uh, so it makes it hard to see the details on the video, but the lines, the piping on the warp nacelles are absolutely brilliantly done. Uh, they're good, they're clean, they're crisp. The push pin marks are all on the inside. There's nothing on the exterior of the piece. Uh, it's just begging to be assembled. And uh, overall, the engineering and layout of these sprues are very good. Uh, let's move on to the boom and the impulse section. Uh, the impulse engines are on this boom. Again, good utilization and placement of parts. As you notice, it's a big ship. The photon torpedo tube is well placed. The detail markings on the lower hull and on the boom area are clear. Again, no flashing. 
all of the injection points are very well placed for easy removal of part and cleanup. So we're good there. Uh, one more sprue to this and one part did come loose the very back of the boom. But uh, again, this is the ball section, the base of the boom, some of the edge parts and the shuttle bay and back of the warp nacelles. Again, very well done. Now I wanna bring your attention to this piece here. This is the part that wraps around the front of the boom. It's already pre-drilled. The holes for lighting are already molded into this and it's very flexible. So it will be very easy to bend that around the boom. Now I do know that there are photo edge sets that are gonna be made available for this that replaces this part but as far as the kit goes that part is very usable and easy to, to do folks i'm going to move on to the clear parts there's a lot of them and again this is set up to be uh easily lit matter of fact they have an aftermarket lighting set from polar lights you can get it at most of your online stores or order it through your brick and mortar stores uh, the clear parts are in a nice bag. We've got them still in there to keep them from being scratched. Uh, that is well done. Decals, you got them, folks. These are typical polar lights decals. They're a little on the thick side, but not bad. Uh, good color, coloration, good markings. Uh, the instructions give you placement very well. Uh, the, again, individually wrapped with a little bit of film over the top to keep the, most, the moisture and the plastic off of it. Um, well done. But here's the brilliant part to this kit, in my opinion. You get color charts. Majority of them are in black and white, right? When you get it, it has a list of colors and it tells you this color is this shade, this color is this shade. Not these guys, folks. Your color chart is actually in folds on the box, and you got two of them. On one side, you have the Tamiya acrylics with a color chart and a good color decal of, uh, detail of where everything goes. On the other side, we have testers enamels, again, with the same placement and colors. Guys, they utilized every square inch of this thing. And they're just brilliantly done because now you don't have to guess. They've got the color chart with the diagram there with the color on it. You can tell what goes where and where the color is. This is a extremely exciting kit for me. I love the Klingons from the Star Trek universe. They did this kit extremely well. I am just itching to dig into this as soon as I clear some projects. We're getting in this one, buddies. Uh, again, there's a lighting set for this kit that you can get from Polar Lights, or you can do your own wiring harness. It's not hard to do. They engineered the kits to put light in it, folks. And this kit's gonna look great on the table. Overall construction, she's gonna be big. So wherever you display this thing, you better have room and keep the cats away, folks. Well, that's it for this episode. This has been the, the Polar Lights 350 scale Katanga. I'm Ron Leaker for Resin Magniacs. So um, until next time, take it easy, folks.